Hi again, everybody. Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. This is episode 111 of our podcast, and welcome aboard. Um, my dog's very excited to be here, too. Uh, listen, uh, over there at Dan John University, we're doing a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, we have a new uh, course that's just came out on kind of the advanced techniques of easy strength. Uh, I am also putting together another free course for our members on the site, Membership is really reasonable, and I'm trying to do more and more for the members. Um, we'll have a couple questions even today where the best answer I can give you is just go to the workout generator because that really is, the, the workout generator is uh, a real-time uh, you know, genius who just knocks out good programming with the equipment you have, with the, the exercises you know how to do. And uh, they're very repeatable workouts. They're very doable workouts. And I'm, I'm really proud to be part of the whole thing. So I, I, I've been trying to put something like this together since I first come, uh, came online in 1998. And so it does amaze me to see that these ideas and things I thought we would have uh, are actually happening. So that's kind of amazing. So join up. DanJohnUniversity.com. It's a very reasonable site to sign up for. Let's see you there. All right, let's get some questions in, okay? We have a question from Richard. I eat like a grown-up. Good for you. Uh, meats, veggies, protein shakes, Monday through Thursday, but then the weekend comes, and I'm back to drinking uh, and bad food choices, most like ruining all the progress from the week. I know you say that weight loss is made in the kitchen. That's true. But I still feel with the amount that I'm exercising that the additional calories on the weekend shouldn't add up to, to what I see in the mirror. Do you have any suggestions on different ways to train more cardio? I've even heard that it could be overtraining. I'm tired of putting in all the effort to keep looking this way. It's really starting to hurt my family because I get so depressed about it. I'm constantly in bad moods. Do I just need to man up and put down the booze for good? Well, you know, I got to tell you, though, Richard, and this is just a small thing, but, you know, uh, if the alcohol is effect affecting your family life, that's that to me is a pretty big one. Um, is the alcohol leading you to make bad choices? I guess that's the big key. Um, there are apps now for the phone where you, um, when you go out or even at home, and you log in every time you have a beverage. And one of the things it teaches you... Um, you know, the thing about alcohol, especially at a bar, or even at the home, is that, you know, you're like the monkey with the lever. You know, every time the, the, the bell goes off, you press the lever and it gives you food. And um, the alcohol that's that's in the beverage, <laughs> once you had a few, you, you forget, you know, you're just ringing the bell. Um, I cut way back on my alcohol this year. Uh, and I think it really did help me with my body mass to come down a bit. Uh, I do feel better. Uh, I think I look better, but that's always a you know a difficult uh, a difficult discussion. Um, when you say you're fine Monday through Thursday, that's not very many days. That's inclusive, so that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's four days, and then the other three. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's gonna be real hard for you to to, to stay ahead of those those numbers. I think, uh, Richard. Um, I mean, if you're having you know. Yeah, like we used to do with that cyclical ketogenic dieting. If you had the two carb up days, you know, I can see it. But three, I, I just think, I don't know, it just seems excessive. But uh, I don't want to be uh, preaching to you. Papa, don't preach. I'm in trouble. Um, yeah. <sighs> think about it a little bit. I, I, I don't necessarily think uh, training more is going to help you. I think you just have to come down. Uh, I mean, even if you said, um, you know, Friday is this, Saturday is this, and Sunday is this, and just put some kind of limitations on your choices on the weekends, uh, I just can't see you having three cheat days and making that work. I, I don't know anybody who's ever been able to do that. Richard, I hope that helps. Thank you. We have a question from Scott. I have two questions for you. First, First off, after listening to your podcast, I've implemented overhead squats into my routine, and it's become my favorite movement. Good. Excellent. Um, over about six months, I've been progressing from dowel mobility to 120 pounds, pause doubles, okay. 
I'm a bigger guy at 6'5", so the bar must be really hard. You must be a little bit too narrow. And I'd love to reach body weight on squats. I'm currently doing walks, hill sprints, and eating like an adult to get down to 220 pounds. So my question is, do you have a favor or even some recommendations on programming overhead squats? As I know, you say easy strength doesn't work on squats. <laughs> but it might on overhead squats. So... Scott, real simple, I don't, I mean, uh, in Maffey Tone's new book, which is somewhere in here, you know, he recommends uh, doing overhead squats like every hour on the hour, every day, you know, this, uh, this, this, the strength program he has. Um, I tell you one thing, if you did overhead squats, you know, eight, eight sets a day uh, on, the, on the hour, you know, good things would happen. But if you just did something as simple as two sets of five, five days a week, overhead squat, um, just stick with that. And, and let's see if, if your doubles are with 120. So, you know, anywhere in that 65 to maybe even heavy as 95, but at first 85, I think some good things would happen. Yeah. I like that, Scott. I like it a lot. My second question is much simpler. I promise. Could you run through some jumping drills from the track and field world? I also love long, I love jumping. As you say, jumpers jump. But I'd like to try some track drills. Well, um, you know, it might be worth your time to, to look up e the training of triple jumpers. I, I've always thought that the triple jump guys and girls seem to have the best uh, understanding of jumping. Uh, I mean, I got great respect for high jumpers, obviously, and uh, long jumpers and, you know, pole vaulters. But triple jumping, that bam, 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 you know, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, I don't know if you can find it, but there is a book called the Triple Jump Encyclopedia. But um, you know, I, I, if if it's something that you can handle, you know, the the, the bounding drills from track and field, the, the high knee bounding, the, the 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 low sweeping, boom 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 bounding, that's some great stuff if you can handle it. I mean, there's there's all kinds of <laughs> all kinds of things there. Um, uh, we we used to use this one thing. Um, the, 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 we call it the three jump, um, and it, it was the boing, boing, boing style where you did a standing long jump and then you landed and you did another one and then you landed and did the third one. And, uh, of course you have to account for the size of the athlete's feet, which is actually kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> the, the kids with bigger feet, uh, get a built in advantage, um, <laughs> which is weird to say, but it's true. Uh, but any of the boing, boing, boing drills are great, I think. Um, uh, and really, uh, I'm sure two minutes in YouTube, you'd find more than you'd ever want to see. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, thank you. We have a question from Tom. And Tom says, having recently suffered from MAPS, middle-aged pull-up syndrome, I've had to stop pull-ups and rehab my elbows. Uh, the issue is very much on the men, thankfully. And in the interim, I have been hanging for time which has greatly benefit me uh, and your elbow issue. Yeah, that would make sense. I can now hang for two minutes straight. That's very good. And was wondering how I should go about progressing from here. Going for longer time seems unnecessary. Should I add weight, perhaps? Hmm. Uh, should you add weight to your hangs? No, I, I would still stick with the more the, the duration. Um, that's just, that's the experience that I've had and the experience I've gotten from the people I trust on the hanging. Um, there is a question. Can you do the bent arm hang? Uh, any of its variations. Um, I think the bent arm hang has great value. Um, I don't think it's going to hurt your elbows, but why don't you just do a test on it? But boy, <laughs> if you can get up to 30 seconds on the bent arm hang, yeah, I, that's, it's, it's just, a, it's amazingly hard. And if you can get from there up to like, uh, I don't know, two minutes like you have here, uh, I think I think I think that's a really good idea. Um, and then he says, "Fine, when the time comes to begin adding pull-ups in again, have you any suggestions?" Yeah, the the thing I would do for you is always hang before every pull-up. So, I mean, I suggest thirty seconds hang, then a pull-up, thirty seconds hang, then a pull-up. But you know, you might you might be able to cut that down, maybe even just fifteen seconds, so that you're cutting. The hangs are cut into the number of reps you can do in the pull-up, which seems to help a lot of people. It's the number. Um, I do know this. Once you've had MAPS, um, 
you're going to get it. I mean, if you mess around with pull-ups, you're going to get it again. Um, so I would spend more time hanging, uh, bent arm hanging, and then doing those hang followed by pull-up reps. Gosh, I hope that helps. Thank you. We have a question from William. What would you recommend for someone who is only able to get to the gym for about 35 minutes, but they could go five to six days a week? The facility they use has everything needed, mainly barbells, kettlebells, assault bikes, and rowers. This question may or may not be for me, but for also all the very busy parents with kids and travel, etc. Keep it in mind the goal of strength. Um, yeah, William, <clears throat> that's exactly why the workout generator is built. I mean, you this is a workout generator. The first thing you do is you're gonna you're gonna log in that you have barbells, kettlebell, assault bike, and rower, and then you know, you'll press the button five or six days a week and you'll press the next button about how, you know, how hard you want them to be. And that's just, William, that's, that's what that, that's why the generator was built for this kind of question. Uh, 35 minutes is a lot of time to train. Uh, uh, you can get a ton done, um, a lot done. Um, you know, the bulk of my lifting now is under 30 minutes and, uh, you know, just because, you know, for me, and for me, it's just those, you know, snatch, clean and jerk, uh, clean and press, and front squats. But you can get a lot of work done in 35 minutes, a lot of quality work. This might be something that you'll be really happy you started doing. Yeah. So, workout generator, okay? Thank you. We have a question from Steve. What are your thoughts on using resistance bands for an easy strength program? Thanks for your advice. Well... You know, I think you can make it work in a couple exercises. Like, you know, when you step on the resistance bands and do presses, that works fairly well. The hinge, I, I, when you step in the bands and do the hinge, um, you're probably going to be way too strong. And then somebody showed me like this kettlebell-like, uh, uh, double kettlebell front squat with resistance bands. The only thing is, uh, if you have hairy arms, you're, you're, you, have to, you have to kind of figure out how to hold that a little bit better. Um, I mean, it's not the perfect tool at all, but you could certainly do some of the training, some of the days with resistance bands, Steve. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if you'd want to go into a full program with it because, you know, resistant bands, um, to me, they always seem to be like, it's easy, easy, you know, easy, easy, you know, and then impossible. So it goes easy, easy, pretty good, impossible. That's my knock on resistance bands. Uh, once you jump up a level, it's they're impossible to work with. Um, <laughs> it's like working with leather. Uh, so, yeah. Um, you probably can get some of it done, but I just don't know if you can do the whole program. But if you can make it work, please let me know, okay? Thank you. We have a question from Tamur. He says, uh, Tamur says, I feel I've outgrown the 24K. Especially following the simple and sinister program, I've completed ten. You know, I I I don't know why people ask me about other people's programs. Uh, ten sets of ten one arm swings, left and right. Ten sets of Turkish get-ups, good. Five under two. Should I move on to a heavier bell, or shouldn't move till I am able to do as many cleans as swings, at least till I master presses with it? The SS program tells us to move to thirty-two once the 24 get up and swings have been completed would love to hear your opinion yeah what i didn't hear you talk about i didn't hear you talk about squats i didn't hear you talk about presses i mean if you can't press the 24 why are you going up in a bell i mean i mean the the 24 i mean no offense but it's it's nothing uh i would prefer you do something like the rite of passage where you do a lot more clean and presses um that'd be my advice to you okay but i, I when you say about growing the 24, I, I'm assuming you can do sets of five in the press with it, uh, easy, um, both hands. Uh, I'm assuming you can gobble squat, you know, and, and, and do all kinds of things with it. And, but if you can't press it, you can't clean it, then stay with that bell and try the rite of passage program. Okay. Thank you. Well, that was a short episode today. Um, remember, if you have questions, you email them to me at podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I love answering the questions. I really enjoy it. Even days like today where I just got off of a long ride and 
I want to get all this done. Uh, but I, I, I love answering your questions. Um, remember, uh, there are resources online uh, that can help you. We have my site at YouTube. We have, I think it's 2,000 videos. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of information there. And of course, if you come to the site, Dan John University, uh, we'll, we'll do everything we can to help you along. Thank you, and we'll talk to you again soon.